The drive from Moab, Utah to Cortez, Colorado takes about two hours. There's some nice scenery, but overall the drive was uneventful, and we assumed our stop in Cortez would be the same. We were wrong. Cortez, Colorado is a small town in the southwest corner of the state. To be honest, we didn't know much about it other than that it was sort of halfway between Moab and Albuquerque, where we were headed to the following week. This quiet town of less than 10,000 people turned out to be a great hopping off point for hiking trails, archaeological sites, and beautiful mountain drives. We'd be staying at the Sundance RV Park right in the middle of town. Luckily, the Colorado Visitor Center was across the street, and the folks there gave us a lot of ideas to keep us busy for our eight-day stay. Good afternoon. Afternoon. We are on our way to Telluride, Colorado. Telluride? Telluride. Telluride, Colorado for a fall foliage um, tour, I guess. The lady at the visitor center in Cortez, Cortez Colorado suggested that we take this little drive. Yeah. And so far it hasn't disappointed, it's beautiful. Yeah. So we're staying in, in Cortez, Colorado for about eight nights. Uh, it was sort of like a halfway point between Moab and Albuquerque, and it was just one of those, hey, you know, we found a, a good place to stay, a uh, good price. Uh, we didn't know much about the area, but it turns out it's 10 minutes from Mesa Verde National Park, and there's a whole lot of stuff actually around. With If you're willing to drive about an hour and a half in any direction, uh, there's a ton of stuff, but even within 10, 15 minutes of town. And so we're take, going up to Telluride and, and uh, take a little... Is it leaf peeper? Are we peeping? Fall foliage. Fall foliage. Or yeah. She said it's the right time of year because, you know, and it's obviously it is. If you you can't look around, but we can look around and see that the colors are really coming out. Yeah. But a lot of stuff is going to be, we're going to be going to Mesa Verde. Uh, we're going to be going to Canyon of the Ancients. But a lot of stuff we'll be doing in this, these eight days here in Cortez. The 76-mile drive along Colorado 145 became our favorite drive of 2019, as seen in our Five Lessons for RV Newbies episode. We were blessed to go through the area when the aspens were changing colors. The golds, reds, and greens turned what would normally be a great drive into a spectacular one. When we arrived in Telluride, we wanted to see more, so we decided to hit the slopes, gondola style. The G, as they call it, is the first and only free transportation system of its kind in the U.S. It has four stops over its eight-mile length. We chose to get off at the San Sofia station and look around, which proved to be a great decision. We took a a gondola up from Telluride up to one of the points. Which one is this? San Sofia. San Sofia. And basically they have a, a gondola system that connects all the different villages. Um, so we, we rode up with a gentleman. He lives in Mountain Village and he commutes via the gondola down to Telluride for work and back every day, which is pretty cool. Um, but yeah, so it connects all the different areas and uh, it was free and you can't beat free. Free is good. Yeah, free is great. Now we're trying to decide if we're going to do the Telluride Trail back down. But it, we'll see. I don't, we don't it's 2.4 miles. We didn't really plan on hiking. We came up here for the drive. It's and the flip flops. <laughs> I didn't even notice she was in flip flops. We were able to see a wedding while we decided to descend the mountain. Instead of taking the gondola back, we're going to take the Telluride Trail, which is 2.4 miles. And it's basically, it's a road. Um, so pretty easy going. Her flip-flop should be just fine. The 2.4 mile trail isn't as easy as we thought. While the average grade is 8%, there are some that hit nearly 45. And maybe, just maybe, proper footwear would be helpful. going on down there brown <laughs> from being so dirty and your legs twitching look at that <laughs> wow 
It's just what How does I it do. feel? It feels weird. It feels like we're getting a good workout, huh? The hike down took us about two hours and was a great way to take in this beautiful area. If you choose to take this drive, do it during sunset if possible. The setting light will make it an unforgettable experience. Okay, so a few weeks ago in episode 22, uh, we were talking about the fact that Casper had an issue where there was no heat coming through the vent. And I mean, we, we couldn't figure it out. We we're like, oh, you know, it's not gonna be that bad for a while. We'll, we'll get it checked out later on when we get everything else done. And we we're sitting in Cortez, Colorado. And I can't remember what time it was. It's probably like maybe five o'clock in the morning. And I hear this blah, 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 blah. I go into the bathroom and I'm sitting there and to initially I'm like, there's something wrong with the black tank. There, there, there's something it's bubbling. And it turns out that the vent, there was bubbles going because the heat was finally starting to push through, through that duct, but there's water in there. So I was like, Oh my God, we've, we, we must've had shower water coming out and it's flowing down in there. And that was, that was my first thing. So I took the cap off. And I, I looked down the side, and here's the video. There was water, like part way up this vent. So what I did, I I called the closest places we could find in Cortez, Colorado, to see if we could get in and. They all said, "Hey, man, we're fully booked. We we couldn't we couldn't even possibly get you for at least another month." So then I called. We have the good Sam concierge service or whatever the the service plan. I'll, I'll I'll put it up here what it is. So I called the number and I tell the guy, and the guy's like, "Man, I have been working on RVs for like twenty some odd years. I've never seen this. There's no way that water should be in that duct." He says, "I tell you what, I would do if I were you, get a screw." If you can put your hand on there and poke a hole in that duct, and that's going to release that water somehow. Maybe when it was manufactured, they got water in there. Um, but do that, and then put water in your in your fresh water tank, fill it up, run your pump for a while, and if you hear that pump kick on when there's no nothing running, no toilet flushing, no sink, if it's if it's kicking on, it means that somehow water is getting from a tank into the into the duct. So we did all that, nothing. It turns out somehow, probably during manufacturing, or I, I don't know, maybe when it was sitting on a lot, somehow water got into that duct, and there's obviously quite a bit. And over time, with the heat going, it was starting to finally get rid of it and bubble out. But we poked, I think, and poked like two holes in there, drained out. We've never had a problem with it since. So, one of those weird little things, if you ever want to know why you're not having heat coming out of one of your ducts, stick a camera down there and see if there's some water, or stick your hand there if you can, because maybe that's the issue. And that was really weird. We no clue why it would happen. Um, so hopefully it doesn't happen to you. This morning we are headed to Mesa Verde National Park, which is about 10, 15 minutes from um, our RV park. But it's like 10 minutes outside of Cortez. And we're going to see if we can get in on some hikes, some ranger-led uh, hikes. There's one that's an hour long and another one that's about two hours long that takes you into some old ancient Puebloan villages that are carved in the side of mountains. I think they're Puebloan. We're going to learn. That's why we're doing this, to learn. Mesa Verde National Park is a short 15-minute drive from town. The park isn't large, but don't expect to get to places quickly. There is one entrance, and access to the most popular sites will be about an hour drive inside the park. The winding road in will take you to multiple viewpoints, and we recommend you make a stop to take in the views. Mesa Verde means green table, and the viewpoints will help you understand why Spanish explorers named it that. This park is home to over 5,000 archaeological sites and 600 ancestral Puebloan cliff dwellings. We started our exploration with the Petroglyph Point hike. We're going to be doing the Petroglyph Trail which is 2.4 miles 
moderately moderately strenuous. We didn't tell Corbin. It's supposed to be this great walk through a canyon, only about 174 feet change in elevation. And that part of it, we actually get to climb up a cliff. The trailhead will give you the option of taking the Spruce Canyon Trail, but we wanted to see petroglyphs. Oh, yeah, I see it too. Oh, look at that. There's chromance. There was chromance going on. The last part of the, the hike up, you actually have to do just a little bit, a little bit of climbing along the side of a cliff. It's not too bad. Good for you. But this is part of what you come up. So if you're scared of heights, Susanna, would you recommend this? I mean, if you want to conquer your fear, maybe, but it was okay until we got to the, have to climb up over the edge of a cliff. That was not cool. And I apologize for the makeup running down my face. There, there may have been a shedding of some tears. Oh, it wasn't some, it I was hysterical. <laughs> We're gonna finish this up. If you're not afraid of heights, make sure to take a moment to look out over the canyon. It's an awesome view. We ended our day after the hike, but we'd secured tickets for two ranger-led hikes for the next day. Some of the major sites in the park are protected due to their significance, so access is limited to ranger-led hikes. As of 2019, there are 13 of these hikes available. Make sure you check the Mesa Verde website for availability as they don't run year-round. The link is in our description. Each hike will require tickets which are $7 per person and are first come first serve. You can reserve tickets online at reserve.gov or you can purchase them at the visitor center. We highly recommend you reserve them online. We chose to do the Cliff Palace and Longhouse hikes and the Cliff Palace was first. This hour-long tour only covers a quarter of a mile but there are plenty of stairs and ladders involved. Cliff Palace is the largest cliff dwelling in the park, and seeing the ingenuity of these people will leave you in awe. It was a good little hike. Four ladders. And climb. Yep. So we did the Cliff Palace. And uh, it was awesome to be there. Just a privilege to be able to go and see something so amazing. And we're both a little winded. <laughs> we got behind on the tour, so we had to rush yeah. to get out. And we've got 
an hour and a half to drive, an hour and a half to get to our next tour. The road from Cliff Palace to Longhouse is long and can take over an hour to complete. If you choose to book both events on the same day, you need to take this into account. The Longhouse hike is two and a quarter miles and will take about two hours. There are plenty of switchbacks and steps along the path, so be prepared. This is the second largest cliff dwelling in the park. It was excavated between 1959 and 1961 and is a fantastic place to learn about the Puebloans that lived in the area over 800 years ago. All this greenery here that you're seeing all the way down, this is an example of, the, of a seed spring. So this was the seed spring for Longhouse. Right? Now, seep spring forms when you've got moisture up on top of the mesa that seeps through the sandstone. Now, sandstone is fairly porous, which is why this is able to happen. So, that moisture seeps through the sandstone until it hits a layer of something that it can't seep through. In this case, that's a layer of shale. So, once that moisture hits that layer of shale, it works its way out. Um, and, and as it gets towards the edges, basically where we are now, it starts eroding the sandstone around it, creating these alcoves. If you only have time for one of these two hikes, we recommend the Longhouse Tour. Its length of time and access to the site provides you with an opportunity you won't forget. We've already done two days in Mesa Verde. Right, and we were gonna go see some other things in the area. And but, then allergies killed us. Yeah, allergies, we, we took a day of rest yesterday. But, um, so Susanna, I think we've passed this site many times, and she's like, oh, I'd like to go there, I'd like to go there. It's the Farview sites, which is just down from the Farview, I think it's the lodge and the cafe and everything. But we passed it, I think, maybe six, seven times, and she wanted to see it. I mean, it's 45 minutes to an hour inside the park, um, and we were gonna go do some other things, but it, I really wanna see that. So we are now in here for a third day, and it's, it's worth it because the Farview sites are, how the ancient Puebloans lived before they moved down to the cliffs. And so it's a small path. I mean, was it an eighth of a mile or? Not even. Okay. It's a short distance and it's just a little trail to walk around and see that the homes and the, the buildings and the cultural center that they had. The ancestral Puebloans weren't always cliff dwellers and the far view sites show just how large and densely populated the area was. There are over 50 villages in this quarter mile area and hundreds of people lived here. Okay, see who can find the spiral design first. Find it. Oh, yeah. Find it first. Don't touch it, don't touch it. Yeah. Don't touch it. That is first. Good work. What's a reservoir? Ah, thing that holds water. Guess what's around this corner? Mm -hmm. A what? A reservoir. Say it louder. Reservoir! These sites provide a window into the lives of the people who lived here between 750 and 1180 AD and are a great stop when visiting the park. When you're staying in a town that has a a bunch of things within about an hour uh, well you are gonna put some miles on your vehicle but you just like you can't pass it up so we decided uh, that even though four corners is what an hour from 
from 40 Cortez. Minutes. 40 minutes from Cortez. And we're going to drive out and we're going to go stand on the four corners of four states or the corners of four states. What are the states, Corbin? Utah. Yeah. Utah. Arizona, Colorado, and New Mexico. Right. Colorado, New Mexico, Arizona, and Utah. Utah. Very good. The Four Corners Monument is the only place in America where four states meet. The monument is remote, but if you are in the area, it's worth the drive. Entrance fees are $5 per person from 1 October to 28 February and $10 per person from 1 March to 30 September. The unique location is inside the 27,000 square mile Navajo Nation and has a demonstration center and many vendors and Navajo artisans selling their works. One more recommendation while you're there, try the fried bread. So at the four corners, there's uh, there's two little fry bread shacks and uh, we haven't had fried bread in a while. And we went to Navajo Taco and the lady that's been doing it, she took over for her mom about four years ago and her mom had run the shop for what she said, 35 years? She's, a, she's mid bite because it's delicious. She's 90. But for five bucks, you get a Pretty amazing fry bread with your choice of topping. Cheese, Parmesan, honey, cinnamon, sugar, you name it. Or you can get it with taco sauce, mm. taco seasoning and meat and stuff. So that is taco. Like, so that is like good stuff. It's our last day in Cortez. And this morning we're headed out to the Canyons of the Ancients, which is 176,000 acres of archaeological wonders and a bonanza of hiking trails. It was a, I said bonanza. Yeah. Yeah. But it doesn't get used very often. But we're going to go hike out and uh, I think we're doing, what is it called? The Salt Creek? Sand Creek? Sand? Um, the Sand something. Um, we'll get Pueblo. Sand Creek Pueblo. Maybe. We're going to get that we should probably start getting this information before. Anyway, uh, this one hike uh, is 12 miles round trip, but we're not doing 12 miles. We're starting at the end. Yeah. And then we'll work our, we're gonna start at the Pueblo, which everybody else starts at the other end and walks the, it's 12 miles round, walks the six miles out to the Pueblo. But, but we're gonna start at the Pueblo and work our way back. We'll go maybe, you know, two and a half miles back and then forward That's so we get five mile noggin. trip yeah. instead of because yeah. you know we're still recovering from the uh, previous uh, 10 miles this week well that and when you when Corbin says how long is it going to be and we say 12 miles he got a little tear <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure he was just going to give up on life at that <laughs> point the Sands Canyon Trail is one of many hiking trails located in the 176,000 acre canyons of the Ancients National Monument. This over 12 mile long trail will take you past cliff dwellings, pueblos, and other archaeological sites. The remains of a once thriving Puebloan area are visible all along the trail. A short walk from the trailhead will bring you to the Sand Canyon Pueblo, and it's amazing how large and populated it was. There's 400 rooms and 100 kibas and 14 towers. That's large, isn't it? Yeah, it's almost twice as big as Cliff, Cliff, Cliff Palace. Good to know. We had visions of a longer hike. But unfortunately, something tragic happened along the way, and we had to end our hike. What was it? So I have allergies, 
and I was doing allergy shots uh, for a while, but then I had a really bad reaction to the allergy shots twice, so we stopped. And uh, he's allergic to everything in Colorado. <laughs> so basically, I'm allergic to all weeds. So when you take a walk, uh, a, a well, it was close to a mile walk through an amazing place, the San Pueblo Canyon, uh, San, San Canyon, Canyon Pueblo. Pueblo. It's my allergies. Uh, and you're just walking through the brush and all of the pollen is just... He's sneezing every 20 feet. <laughs> I don't know if you can see. Um, I'm a little poofy in the eyes, a little, a little wet. I think I went through a whole box of tissues. So we're not going to do any more hikes. This is basically... We were going to do a museum and I think we're going to call Cortez Done. over. <laughs> and uh, We'll get better in Albuquerque. Yeah. Hopefully. We're just walking around balloons and not weeds, so, yep, but Cortez was fun. And on Albuquerque. Cortez, Colorado turned out to be a great place to experience history and explore another national park. It's a place that should not be overlooked on your travels. Next week, we're off to Albuquerque and the Albuquerque International Balloon Fiesta. Thank you for watching. We'd love to share our journey with you. So hit that subscribe button and also the notification bell so you know when a new video is uploaded. And don't forget to leave your comments down below and hit the like button.